When Star Trek The Next Generation first aired in 1987, the shot at glory and longevity was slim at best. In fact, the chances of it going anywhere were so slim that Sir Patrick Stewart didn't unpack his bags after moving to LA. The Next Generation had what was known as the three S's working against it. It was a syndicated science fiction sequel. But to find the odds, the show went on to become an Emmy-nominated Peabody and Hugo Award-winning television show. It ran for seven seasons before being cancelled in 1994 to make way for a, a hit and miss movie franchise. Following the aged but well loved original series, The Next Generation was a groundbreaking show and a watershed moment in the history of science fiction television. Without Picard and his crew proving that audiences would respond, chances are we would have never seen anything like the number of science fiction shows from the last two decades, and the world would be a poorer place for it. Before we begin, I should point out that the article version of this list included 25 five episodes, but for this video we're going to drop that down to 10. So if your picks aren't here, they'll most likely be there, and the link is in the description. Anyway, my name's Chris Thompson, set Netflix to standby, because here are the 10 greatest episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. Number 10, Conspiracy. Granted, the first season, at least when compared to later seasons, wasn't its best. Riker hadn't yet grown his beard, but this is definitely an underrated episode. An almost early draft of the Borg storyline, the story involves an invasion of the Federation by parasitic bug-like creatures. Breathing through a quill on the back of the host's neck, the parasites invade the bodies of high-ranking Starfleet officers and weaken the Federation's defenses from within. When the Enterprise returns to Starfleet headquarters, Picard finds out there are three high-ranking admirals that have been infected and have cornered him and Riker leading to probably one of the most gory shootouts in syndicated television history, including an officer's head being blown to bits by Picard and Riker. That was fucking metal. With the writer's strike of 1988 ongoing, which had delayed the Next Generation Series 2 for two months, this storyline was never properly wrapped up and ended with a homing beacon being sent by the mother creature across the galaxy for a larger scale invasion. Number 9, Iborg. In the third installment of the series featuring the Borg, the Enterprise intercepts a distress signal emanating from a nearby moon, where they discover a crashed Borg scout ship with one surviving Borg. The Borg, known as Third of Five, is taken aboard for medical treatment, causing much dismay and discomfort to the crew, especially for Picard, who was still fairly traumatized from his experience with the Borg a year before. Third of Five takes a liking to Geordie, who tries to teach him that it's better to think as an individual rather than as a collective and even gives him a sense of identity by calling him Hugh instead of Third of Five. Meanwhile, the crew debates whether or not to return Hugh to the Collective, as well as whether or not to return him with a virus that could ultimately destroy the Collective. As easy as it would be to use Hugh to destroy the Borg Collective, they decide the moral thing to do would be to send him home free of tampering. However, in their next encounter, the Enterprise crew will discover that by giving him individuality, they manage to do great damage to the Borg without the virus at all. Number 8, The Chain of Command, Parts 1 and 2. In arguably the darkest hour in the next generation's seven year run, even darker than the best of both worlds, Picard is placed on a special assignment with Worf and Dr. Crusher in order to infiltrate Cardassian space to seek and destroy any metagenic weapons essentially a prototype for a Cardassian bioweapon on the planet Celtrus III. Meanwhile, the new draconian Captain Marmite Edward Jellico makes life difficult for everybody on board the Enterprise, especially Riker and Geordi. He fails miserably at negotiating with the Cardassians and sees war as inevitable anyway and Starfleet picked him based on his prior experience with the Cardassians. When Picard is kidnapped on Seltris III, the magenic weapon threat was revealed to be a total hoax just to lure him there. He is tortured for information regarding Federation strategy in the event of a Cardassian invasion. Picard's torture scenes are particularly gut-wrenching and difficult to watch, and include sensory deprivation, starvation, physical torture, and stress positions amongst others. The sensory deprivation involved tricking Picard into thinking that there were five bright lights instead of four, and the torture will continue unless Picard acknowledges that there are five lights. Jellico, the Federation's negotiator during this crisis, for some reason disavows any knowledge of Picard's mission, leading to veins popping out of Riker's head before he's relieved of duty. But the two of them must resolve their differences when Jellico asks Riker to take the shuttle and construct a minefield as a last ploy to get Picard out. In perhaps one of the greatest moments in the next generation history, as Picard is released, the last thing Picard does is defiantly yell at his Cardassian Cardassian captors, there are four lights. Number 7. The Measure of a Man 
Paying homage to the famous US Supreme Court case Dred Scott v. Sanford, Season 2's The Measure of a Man is considered by many Trekkies to be the first truly great episode of The Next Generation. Oh, just look at him. Bastard. Commander Bruce Maddox, an overzealous yet clumsy scientist who was the sole dissident in a proven Data's entrance to Starfleet Academy, wishes to dismantle Data in order to continue Dr. Noonien Sung's work. His motives was to clone Data, reverse engineer him, so he could be standard issue on all Federation vessels. Data, along with the rest of the crew, believe that Maddox's scientific method is flawed and could very well be fatal to Data, and he attempts to refuse the experiment. However, Starfleet has handed him over to Maddox for immediate testing. Picard immediately challenges the transfer order and a hearing is convened to determine Data's level of sentience. Is he a person with equivalent rights to any other Starfleet officer? Or is he, as the judge puts it, nothing more than a glorified toaster owned by Starfleet? Picard is assigned as Data's counsel and Riker as the prosecutor. A position where Riker must try to hand over his friend for the android equivalent of medical experimentation. Number 6. All Good Things Parts 1 and 2 The series finale to Star Trek The Next Generation is the perfect ending to this sci-fi classic. The entire overlapping plot of the previous seven years comes full circle so beautifully, and the fact that they ended just like any other episode just shows that the adventure is far from over, as evidenced by the release of Star Trek Generations mere months later. Captain Picard finds himself shifting between three time periods against his will, the present, his first days on the Enterprise, and 25 years in the future as an old man. In two of the three time periods, a massive spatial anomaly is discovered in the neutral zone. A spatial anomaly that gets progressively larger in the past and doesn't exist in the future where Picard is dismissed as an old man suffering from Eurumonic Eurumonic Syndrome. Eurumonic Syndrome. Eromotic syndrome. Eromotic syndrome. What you got there? Oh, I got the eromotic syndrome. Anyway, it's a degenerative neurological disorder, right? When Picard appears alone in the post-atomic court, exactly where he stood seven years ago, it is instantly known that Q is behind this time shifting, and that is another test in his trial for humanity that has been ongoing throughout the next generation's run. Number five, the defector. If you ever find yourself dealing with somebody who insists Kirk is more badass than Picard, tell them to go and watch this episode. It'll do one or two things. It'll either shut them up or make them concede that the two are in fact equal. The Enterprise takes aboard a Romulan admiral wanted in the Empire for defection. He claims to have information regarding a planned attack on the Federation and the installation of a Romulan base along the neutral zone. But the crew, ever suspicious, don't know whether or not to believe him. Romulans, man, they've got a bit of a track record, you know what I'm saying? When the Enterprise arrives at Nelvana 3, the alleged location of the Romulan base, the Enterprise discovers that no such base exists. Commander Tomalak and his fleet of warbirds decloak and surround him, leading to arguably one of the most badass Picard moments of all time, when he reveals that a fleet of Klingon birds of prey are side by side with the Enterprise as well. Picard simply asks the Romulan commander, shall we die together? giant dangling space balls. Number four, Q Who. A lot of people consider The Measure of Man to be the first truly great episode of The Next Generation, and it was fantastic. But if you like a lot of explosions and a lot of special effects and a lot of action, you may just disagree wholeheartedly. Because for you, it's probably this episode where The Next Generation finally found its place. The omnipotent Q returns for another laugh, hurling the Enterprise 7,000 light years away to their first encounter with the deadly Borg. Trying to prove a point that the crew needs him, and they aren't nearly ready enough for what faces them out there. Q's actions in this episode provoked a debate amongst fans that still rages on over 25 years later. Is Q really a bad guy, or is he like a concerned parent imposing tough love on his children? Picard even says himself, maybe Q did the right thing for the wrong reasons. Personally, I count myself amongst those that would love to see John Delancey return as Q, just to piss Picard off one more time. Number three, the inner light. Even though not many people can resist a fast-paced, morally ambiguous, even violent episode of The Next Generation, similar to I, Borg, which premiered the week before this, the drama in the inner light is quite literally perfect. The Enterprise encounters an ancient probe adrift in space. When a beam of light incapacitates Picard, he wakes up over a thousand years in the past as Cayman, a respected member of a small community on the planet Catan and he has run a high fever and suffers from delusions of grandeur, notably the delusion of being Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. Over the course of the next 25 minutes, Picard lives out an entire lifetime as Cayman, eventually coming to terms with the idea that Catan is in fact his real home. He has a wife, children, and a grandchild. However, he discovers evidence that a supernova 
is imminent, and in his final moments he witnesses the very probe that he saw years ago being launched to seek him out. Number two, yesterday's Enterprise. In what was the closest thing we got to a Mirror Universe episode of The Next Generation, at least until the Tipton's graphic novels, the Enterprise-C, destroyed over 20 years ago, is found adrift in a time displacement, causing history to be dramatically altered. No Worf, no Troy, Tasha is alive, and the Enterprise is a hardened battle cruiser. The presumed retreat by the Enterprise C during a rescue mission at a Klingon outpost results in 20 years of war between the Federation and Klingons. The Enterprise survivors adjust to life in the future and the consequences of their actions while debating whether or not to return to battle, certain to be destroyed. But before they can, Captain Garrett of the Enterprise C is killed in a surprise Klingon attack, meaning that history cannot possibly be fully restored. After finding out she is in fact dead in this timeline, Tasha returns with the Enterprise-C, man and tactical. In the midst of a massive firefight resulting in the Enterprise-D's destruction, the Enterprise-C withdraws into the time displacement, restoring the original timeline, however leaving the crew of the Enterprise-D with no memory of the events. The events in the displaced timeline, however, will have long-lasting effects throughout the rest of the series, in particular how Sela came to be. Number 1, The Best of Both Worlds, Part 1 and 2. Probably, nay scratch that, the greatest episode in the entire Star Trek franchise, and ranked by TV Guide as one of the top 100 television episodes of all time. The Borg ship we encountered a year prior finally enters into Federation space, months ahead of their estimated arrival. Destroying a Federation colony and several starships, the Borg make it perfectly clear that their presence is a deliberate act of war. After a game of cat and mouse with the Enterprise, the Borg managed to board the ship and kidnap Captain Picard before heading for their primary target, Sector 001, Earth. As Geordi and Wesley construct a superweapon to destroy them before they reach Earth, an away team is sent to the Borg ship to retrieve the captive captain, only to find out that he has been assimilated. Left with no other choice when the away team returns, Riker is forced to open fire on the Borg ship, with Picard still aboard, and thus began the longest summer of Trekkie's lives. Flash forward three months and the weapon fails. Picard's memories have been probed, preparing the Borg for an adequate defense against the superweapon. Worf and Data emerge aboard the Borg ship and retrieve the captain, after obliterating the entire Federation fleet at Wolf 359. Somewhere in the wreckage, the now widowed Lieutenant Commander Sisko and his son make their escape as seen in the opening of Deep Space Nine. And while the Enterprise takes heavy damage in the firefight above Earth, Data uses the Captain's connection to the Hive to implant a self-destruct sequence in the Borg ship. It is, without a doubt, the best episode of Star Trek ever, and in terms of television, it is one of the greatest television episodes of all time. It loses nothing, no matter how many times you watch it. And that's our list. Did we miss your favourite episode? Share your own picks in the comments below. And just as a reminder, this list was originally 25 episodes, and I've put a link to the article in the description below. If you want to go on even more of a deep dive, why not follow me as well? Edit Chris Edit. I've been Chris from What Culture. Be excellent to each other.